live deep in the heart of West Texas. It's the James Hendricks Show, the Hendricks Center for Excellence in Conservative Federalist Studies. No exams, no diplomas, just strict learning. Okay, guys, um, I have, there was a time last week when I had thought to suspend giving my daily, uh, almost daily political podcast because of the news of the Omicron variant. But now I begin to realize that uh, I have been played. And friend, you have been played. Let, let, let me say it again. Friend, you have been played. I'm only going to cover one news story today. Maybe talk about it a little bit more at length. It's it's a piece I saw just a few minutes ago in the American Thinker. Talks about the, the crumbling narratives of the ruling class. Uh, give me a minute, I'm going to find out who wrote that. Hats off to J.B. Shirk. I think he, I really think he took the gloves off and just really exposed, ripped wide open the narratives of these uh, woke uh, Marxist aristocrats and autocrats who had loved none better than for us to live in absolute fear. All the time. And he was also going after the uh, corporations that were putting out that type of uh, propaganda. Let me tell you something. As your public affairs uh, uh, consultant, I have to say, The Democrats are in danger, I think, of extinction. Unless they can agree to change the narrative to to do what I thought that they originally were planning on doing. Defending the rights of the common people. In fact, all people. And equality. Hey, I grew up Listening to a, um, you know, my daddy's side of the family. Grandfather, my daddy's side of the family. Who said that the, the Democratic Party was to defend for the rights of the common people. And when I was 14 years old, I was in the fifth grade. I was at Mendoza Heights Christian School. I wrote a research paper. On the uh, Democratic Party. Now, I didn't like the fifth grade teacher I had back then, but I'm going to sing her praises. After a while, I saw the marks that she had on the papers, and she knew. She knew that I had been ill-informed. In fact, during the process of writing the paper, she would call me in sometimes during uh, during recess, but sometimes after school. I didn't realize what she was trying to do. But as your public affairs uh, consultant, I do now. I do now. 
She's like, are you sure? James, where are you getting, you know, I, I know you're looking at the periodicals. I've, I've helped you with it. Of course, the sad thing is back then, neither, neither the school or she really knew what to do to help a blind person. They just didn't. They just assumed that they could gloss over, you know, the visual impairment thing. Oh, he can read microfish. He can read microfish. And see, that's what's going on by the, with Marxism. That's going on in this country right now. This one size fits all thing. And you know, it took me 10 years after writing that research paper. 10 years to open my eyes. And realize that the modern Democratic Party of Jimmy Carter, a Bill Clinton, Marxist one size fits all, dividing the classes and conquer. Poke fun of the Christians. You ever thought about that? One size fits all. Divide the classes. Poke fun of the Christians. They've been saying and trying that crap off and on since the 60s. Many times, it's kind of like my Americans slap their hands saying, uh uh uh, we ain't buying that. And so that's what I'm hoping that America does this year in 2022. This November is like, uh, 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 we ain't buying it. There is one, only one way the Democrats could win. <laughs> Say they was to bring me in as a consultant. Mandate, Okay. Mandates out the window. The years that Demo the Democratic Party began its sinking into Marxism, which, according to Rush Limbaugh, began 19 back in 1968. I wasn't alive back then, but I take his word for it. But the day that happened, the Democratic Party lost its mor mores. Now, I'm not saying that... Uh, FDR, many many of in that party tally was one of the greatest presidents. He he made some serious classic mistakes, you know. And, and we're not going to make this a history lesson, okay? We're looking at current public affairs. We're talking about an actuarium of freedom. Listen to me, an actuarium of freedom. People are tired of the propaganda. And as your purveyor of truth, I know that they are. I never realized what was involved. <coughs> I remember when I started in college, I took broadcast journalism because I wanted a career in talk radio or Christian radio news. What I sadly discovered is that most journalistic outlets, print and broadcast, they're not interested in the truth. And while we're at it, let me ask you something. Do you think Joe Biden has said anything coherent in the White House? Not much. I listen to the sound bites, you know, on the uh, Newsmax Daily podcast. And most of it is, is incoherent and really breaks some of the key rules I learned through Toastmasters International. God bless Toastmasters International. Crumbling narr narratives. Yes. 
even the rapper Forgiato, okay, he said emphatically that Biden's popularity has crumbled. So if we are to be the actuarians of truth, we need to fight for the liberty of Americans. You know what you've got to do. And don't you give up. Don't get into fear. Okay? It's common for the news media on both sides of the aisle to do that. But as I discuss and report the news, I'm going to tell you, do not give in to fear. I came close to giving in. But then through the help of my friends and close advisors, I realized. I, I do not need to live in fear. I refuse to live in fear. Because, to be honest with you, I live with enough fear up here in my head. And so I refuse to sit there and, and just take it. Now with that, I hope you enjoy listening to the James Hendrick Show. If you like what you hear, please subscribe and receive most daily updates. It's Jimmy Hendrix and until next time, take care, stay proactively informed, and God bless you.